Yo, what's going on? It's Adam. Uh, we just put a cold air intake on the truck. We're actually not finished yet. I've got one thing left to do. And while I prep everything uh, to show you what that last thing is, I'm going to run you through the whole install process and then we'll try to leave some kind of review, sort of like we did if you watched our uh, two inch lift video. It's going to be very similar. We'll zoom right through all the stuff. You won't have to worry about skipping and all that. So I'm going to stop wasting your time. Hit the subscribe button right now and let's show you how to install this thing. Okay, go ahead and remove this clip for your harness and you can either unplug it or remove the entire mass airflow sensor because we are going to have to reinstall this on the new intake. Pull that out and we'll set that gently over there. We're going to use an eight millimeter hex here. Loosen these up. And this tube will come off when we get these two nuts off here, or two bolts off here, they look like 10 millimeters. This just pops up like that. I'm gonna just gently pull this off. Now we have our recirculation hose here for the crankcase. These wire strippers have been in my toolbox for two decades and they make great little hose clamp tools here and this should just slide off now now we're going to pop the two clips off of the top of the intake box remove the top as well as your filter 10 there 10 down in here Right in here, there's another 10 mil. And we will have to remove this. Gently squeeze that. And we could simply tuck it in there like that. Now we can install the inside piece, which goes here. But the side on the outside of this fender wall, we can't install until we have a better day to pull the fender lining out. There doesn't seem to be a wrong way to install this, but put the serial numbers down and on the inside of the wall. Now push it through to where the fender wall sits between this groove. Now here we had to use the old mounts from our old intake box. This one's already installed. And now I'm gonna to try to show you on camera how to remove this one. Don't rip it, don't cut it. So to install them, you're just going to do the reverse of pulling them out by shoving them back into your new box. Now we're going to finger tighten these screws before we get a ratchet in there to finish them off. Look through the window to help you see. Crankcase recirculation tube or whatever it is that we disconnected earlier, we're gonna have to replace it with a new one because this one is too short. this side back here to go back to, uh, on our our little bung here and our intake charge pipe it's got like a lip around it and that will seal on this flared part of the tube already put our ring on and then we'll put our pipe on Put this through here. Just keep pushing and twisting. So you should have your mass airflow sensor it has an arrow on it right here, it's pointing this way. You've got a template and a gasket here from Z1. They all need to go on here. So I believe it's it's supposed to be a three millimeter. I don't have a three millimeter, so I'm using an old one eight. You will be supplied with a coupler. Look at that pretty pink. Save the tatas. This is super, super tight. 
like ultra tight. There should be like tons of extra room to loosen this up, slip it on and tighten it up. And it's like just so tight. And they're both the same size. Okay, that ain't working. That is not gonna happen. I'm using the stock ones, man. I'm not wasting my time fighting with that thing. See how much extra room I have left here? See how this thing is expanded enough that I can actually, can actually use it? Boom, see? Okay, so now here's that thing that I was telling you about. We're gonna put this velocity stack on the outside now. I've jacked the truck up and just enough to where I can start popping some of these little screws out here. I don't know that you're gonna have to do it because as long as you can just open up just enough to get your hand in here, you'll be fine. But I wanted to do it enough to where I could show you on films. Right there is the intake opening for our box. And I'm just gonna slide my hand up there and we will insert this velocity stack. And there you go. Velocity stack installed. And you know, if I gotta be completely honest with you, I would not even install this velocity stack if it weren't for me making a video and putting it on YouTube. Because I know it probably doesn't make a single ounce of difference if that's on or not, but I know in those comments, you guys will destroy me. So, hey, I did it. Um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about some of the gas mileage, some of the, I guess the performance. Um, Z1 has all this listed on the website, so I'm not necessarily giving you new information, but more or less my opinion about the facts, I guess. Um, so let's get to that. All right, well, I guess we have to do the mandatory take her out for a drive and floor it. I guess if you get up to about 5,500, you can hear it. I mean, I don't know who, who drives around at 5,500 and 6,000 RPMs all day long. So um, unless you're really getting on it, you're really not gonna hear this cold air intake. And uh, I don't know why you would spend $400 so you can hear a sound. Um, but if you do spend $400, you kind of feel like you should hear the sound. Does that make sense? I bought it for the fuel mileage. Let's see if you can hear it now. 6,000 RPMs is really about all you're gonna get. So you're really gonna have to be intentional about revving it all the way out to hear the intake. Uh, but I bought it for the, the fuel mileage. And I just don't know what it what the deal is. You can't get good fuel mileage out of these trucks. Um, I, I will say this, I keep forgetting I have larger tires on the truck. So I'm losing 10% on, on my odometer because of that. So the best I've been able, I've ran three tanks of gas through the truck since I put the cold air intake on. The best I've been able to get before the, uh, the fuel light comes on. This is kind of my standard, right? Like we can all stretch it as far as possible, but the longest I've been able to go before that light comes on is 200, 285 miles. Besides the fuel mileage, you guys needed something else to watch. So I dropped the coin bought one put it on gave you an install video and now a review so if i had to give this like a one out of ten rating probably go with like a six and a half um there are some pluses there are some downsides so let me just give you a quick run through of that the the pluses are it was fairly easy to install i like the design of this box over the prior frontier i had with the volant system which was very common very popular the volant had these screws that put this plexi, uh, plexiglass on the heat from the engine would cause it to warp and it wouldn't seal correctly uh, this is a much better design um, i like that z1 included an extra hose here that fit but going back to the install their ring clamps didn't fit so we had to reuse the stock ones and then this velocity stack in the fender well here um i didn't really like that it maybe it helps power numbers i i, I seem skeptical of that not of the power numbers they've done their job they've posted their dyno charts and all that so you can go to their website you'll see it you probably already have so i'm not going to refute that but I, I don't know that it's related to the velocity stack and so that was a pain having to put that in here it's also quiet you know, if you're going to spend money on a cold air intake like you expect every time you're riding around town, you know, you can kind of give it that little that little tap on the gas and you hear you hear your intake and that is not going to happen with this one. And that might not be 
uh, that might not be Z1's fault. It could just be the way Nissan designed the 3.8 motor. Um, it's kind of pricey, this, this mod, for what you get. Again, the fuel mileage, you know, these trucks get 20 miles a gallon, I guess. It would be nice if you could hit 25. I don't know that that's going to happen ever. Uh, maybe, maybe some exhaust stuff. Maybe you can tune something with up rev to get that. But um, I don't know. I think you can definitely probably get some good power numbers if you put an, an exhaust on, an up rev tune. So there you go. Bunch of pros, bunch of cons. Appreciate you guys watching the video. Uh, definitely put your comments below. We have tons of comments on all our videos. And, you know, the fanboy stuff, the, hey, you're wrong, this is how it is, blah, 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 the kind of duking it out in the comments. We should be doing that because this is America and we should be able to talk to one another and disagree and it's okay because it's fine. So keep it civil. And uh, next video, we're probably gonna do an upper control arm on, on the Frontier, the D41. It's been a common conversation over on the two inch lift video. So we'll probably bring that to you next. And uh, we thank you guys for, for tuning in. We'll see you around. See you on the next one. Bye.